Well, hello, and welcome once again to the Constitution Study. My name is Paul Engel, and we are here to return the Constitution to we the people. Uh, I'm glad you could join me today. If this is your first uh, episode, your first visit, this should be interesting. We are reviewing a Supreme Court decision from earlier this uh, this year, and I hope you'll find it interesting. I hope you find it insightful. Uh, if this is not your first time, if you're returning, I'm glad you found it worth your while. I, I'm glad that uh, you're willing to give me a little bit of time to look at not just the Constitution, but as we will today, <clears throat> current events, look at what's going on, look at it from a constitutional standpoint, and uh, help educate ourselves about the Constitution. So we know what our rights are, be prepared to assert and defend them. Uh, hopefully you will go to the website, constitutionstudy.com. There you can find more information. There's a blog post related to this uh, podcast episode there. Um, also, there'll be a show page for this with any notes or information that, that you may need. I hope you'll ask a question. Uh, I've, I've had a couple people asking questions. I really like when people ask questions. One, it helps me understand where your mind's at. It gives me an opportunity to look at something maybe from a new point of view, and uh, hopefully we all learn a little bit from that. Uh, obviously, you can subscribe on to this podcast uh, either through Apple or through Libsyn. Uh, I I hope you will continue listening to these. You can sign up for the mailing list on the mailing list. Again, I'm not spamming out lots of information. It's mostly news. It's what's coming up. Uh, I'm trying to set up some speaking engagements so there will be notifications about where I'm going to be and when. I'm also looking at some other things to do with the Constitution study, so those will be announced to you there. And for signing up for the Constitution study mailing list, you get a free copy of my uh, my essay, the current essay is How the 16th and 17th Amendments Destroyed the Republic. So hopefully you'll find that interesting and go there. And of course, you can always support me on Patreon, patreon.com slash constitution study. You can find a link on the page at the website. So today I want to look at uh, the Supreme Court decision in NIFLA versus Becerra, Attorney General of California. And this is a this is a free speech case, and it really evolved around a California law. And the real question was: under what circumstances can state governments require certain types of speech from private entities? Uh, reading from the decision, reading from the syllabus of the decision, quote: the FACT Act requires clinics that primarily serve pregnant women to provide certain notices. Clinics that are licensed must notify women that California provides free or low-cost services, including abortions, and give them a phone number to call. Unlicensed clinics must notify women that California has not licensed the clinics to provide medical services, close quote. <clears throat> so while the purpose that the California legislature provided for this law was to ensure state residents were properly informed, the question before the court was whether or not this burden on the free speech rights of crisis pres pres pregnancy centers, say that three times fast, the free speech rights of crisis pregnancy centers was constitutional. So if you look at the opinion, there are really two types of clinics that are targeted by this California law, licensed and non-licensed, and each had different requirements. Licensed clinics were required to notify women of the availability of state-funded abortion options. Well, actually, there are several options, including abortion. And that was the problem for these licensed pro-life pregnancy centers. They're crisis pregnancy centers. They, they, they're pro-life. They're there to not provide abortions, to provide other options to, than abortions. <clears throat> now, the unlicensed clinics were notified women that the clinic was not licensed, you know, this is interesting because this was a burden placed on no other type of non-licensed clinic that I'm aware of. So the court found that this content-based speech requirement for licensed clinics was unconstitutional because California could not show that it was narrowly tailored to serve the compelling state interest. See, the court found that the since the law regulated the content of speech, then the Ninth Circuit should have used strict scrutiny, meaning the highest level of protection of individual rights. It did not. <clears throat> the California law required licensed clinics to disclose information about state-sponsored services about abortion. While the law does allow for the requirement of commercial speech 
to include purely fact quote purely factual and uncontroversial information about the terms under which services will be available close quote abortion is hardly a non-controversial topic nor was a required speech a regulation of professional contact conduct since it requires speech not action the court found that the notice re- requirements for unlicensed clinics were unconstitutional since nobody could show any actual potential harm, only a hypothetical harm. The court also found that not only was the law not the least intrusive method of achieving the state's stated goal of properly informing its residents, but that it was narrowly targeted to clinics providing family planning or pregnancy-related services. I would say the state went out of its way to target pro-life speech and require those licensed by the state to market their abortion services, regardless of the conscience of those clinics. Now, in this decision, uh, Justice Kennedy wrote a concurring opinion, uh, which was also signed on by Alito and Gorsuch. And he said, uh, quote, It does appear that viewpoint discrimination is inherent in the design and structure of the act. This law is a paradigmatic example of the serious threat presented when government seeks to impose its own message in the place of individual speech, speech, thought, and expression. For here, the state requires primarily pro-life pregnancy centers to promote the state's own preferred message, advertising abortions. This compels individuals to contradict their most deeply held beliefs, beliefs grounded in basic philosophical, ethical, or religious precepts, or all of these. And the history of the act's passage and its under-inclusive application suggests a real possibility that these individuals were targeted because of their, their belief. Kennedy said it's viewpoint discrimination, plain and simple. It's, it's, it's inherent in the way it was designed, and it's inherent in the way that it was uh, put forth and the way it was applied. The fact that they targeted only certain uh, pregnancy centers, that they only wanted one side of speech to be included and to do so in a way that basically forced people to contradict their their, their own beliefs, their own conscience. He he also makes a point of the history of the Act's passage and showing how it it only targeted a certain group, this under-inclusive application he mentions, really shows the threat of what happens when the government can tell the people what they can and cannot say. So as evidence of this basic blatant viewpoint discrimination, Kennedy offered, quote, the California legislature included in its official history the congratulatory statement that the act was part of California's, quote, le- I'm sorry, legacy of, quote, forward thinking. But it is not forward thinking to force individuals to be an instrument for fostering public adherence to an ideological point of view they find unacceptable. Basically, the legislator said, yippee, look at how great we are. Look at how forward thinking we are. We are going to force people to talk about abortions, even if they don't want to. You know, they call themselves progressive, but that is a very regressive point of view. The state is going to tell you what to think and what to do. And he and and Kennedy, I believe, was right. It is very dangerous. Now, very interesting. We get into the dissents. Uh, Justice Breyer wrote a dissent, wrote the uh, uh, a dissent that was joined by Ginsburg and Sotomayor and, and, and Kagan. He wrote the dissent, I should say. And it's very interesting because, according to Justice Breyer, since many ordinary disclosure laws would not pass this test, the test must be wrong. You see, the court, through the opinion, said, "Well, this doesn't pass the smell test." It's, it's too restrictive, it's too targeted, it, it's a, too much of an impact on freedom of speech. And according to Breyer, well, we have lots of these laws, therefore, since this would, would potentially damage those laws, the test must be wrong. In fact, quote, many ordinary disclosure laws would fall outside the majority's exceptions for disclosures related to a profession's own service or conduct. These include numerous commonly found disclosure requirements relating to the medical profession. See, Justice Breyer seems to anchor his position in the fact that the court held in times past, they've given deference to regulations of medical, of the speech of medical professionals. 
Seeing the laws requiring informed consent, these justices do not see the discrimination in requiring pro-life clinics to advertise for abortion services while not requiring abortion clinics to advertise for pro-life centers. So I, I, I've read through this and, um, you know, here's what I see. You know, I am pleased by the, that the court found that this was an undue imposition on free speech, that this law has been uh, rescinded and the case remanded. I do, however, find it quite disturbing that so many people charged with upholding the Constitution seem so blind to its most fundamental ideals. From the legislature of California to the federal judges, including the four Supreme Court justices who dissented, it appears obvious that their own viewpoint took precedence over the plain text of the Constitution. Amendment 1 reads, Congress shall make no law abridging the freedom of speech. That includes not only saying what you cannot speak, but telling you what you must speak. You are not free if you are told what you can speak much less what you can't speak. Now, Article 6 of the Constitution enshrines the fact that the Constitution itself is the supreme law of the land, including over state laws. Article 6, paragraph 2 says, This Constitution and the laws of the United States, which shall be made in pursuance thereof, shall be the supreme law of the land. Put quite simply, the state of California should be ashamed of such a blatant viewpoint discrimination and infringement on people's freedom of speech. I include the people of California since they chose their legislatures to represent them. Now, if you didn't vote for them, that's one thing, but it doesn't change the fact that you're still responsible for the people you send to Sacramento. You know, all I think of it, all the federal judges who put their viewpoint and precedent before the Constitution should also be ashamed. And while we're at it, we should all be ashamed. Ashamed for electing men and women to represent us in Washington who will not do their duty to oversee and hold accountable the judicial branch of the federal government. The U.S. Constitution, Article 1, Section 8, Paragraph 9 says, The Congress shall have power to constitute tribunals inferior to the Supreme Court. And then in Article 3, Section 1, The judges of both the Supreme and inferior courts shall hold their offices during good behavior. You know, perhaps if we held our elected representatives accountable to their oaths to uphold the Constitution, we would have more just judges focused on that document rather than on their precedents. You know, perhaps if we held our elected officials accountable for their actions, they would not feel so emboldened to congratulate themselves for abridging speech they do not like. Perhaps we would again then live in a land of the free. Then again, Perhaps that's not what we want. Perhaps that's not what the citizens of California want. If the citizens of California want to write their own laws, that's fine, but that does not give them the right to overturn the Constitution. I give a lot of deference to state authority because that's what the Constitution does. Not, though, when they use that to infringe on the rights of their citizens. So, I, I again, this is um, NIFLA versus Becerra. Uh This is a, a, a win for free speech, a win for the idea that the state cannot compel you to speak contrary to your conscience, at least not without a really, really, really good constitutional reason. You know, the, 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 the deference to medical speech, the, the, uh, uh, disclosure requirements of medical speech. It's one thing to say you must tell people that you know this drug can cause this problem. It's quite something. Something else to say. By the way, um, we're going to advertise for this drug. We're going to advertise for this service, and if you don't like it, too bad. Uh, if you want to do your job, if you want to have a job, a business, you better toe the line, or we're going to we're going to shut you down. So I I think it was a overall it was a good ruling. Uh, I hope you agree as well. If you have questions, if you disagree with me, uh, please go to the website, comment on this blog post. I, I, I'm not perfect. Maybe I missed something. I hope you will take a look. I hope you'll read into this a little farther because I, as especially if you listen to my episode on the the Carpenter decision, um, should have gone out last week. 
you know, the importance of reading the decisions and reading the Constitution and being willing to say, maybe somebody has a better idea than I do. Maybe somebody better describes what's going on. This may be a scenario where uh, maybe you'll look at the Constitution and say, hey, um, you know, maybe this makes a little more sense. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Constitution Study. I hope you'll head to the website. Um, again, I'm looking for questions. Uh, I had one person ask a question, which already has become uh, an episode, uh, and I'm looking for more. I love the engagement. I love the involvement. Uh, besides, it helps to be more than me just speaking. Uh, I'm, I'm interested in people who will, who will participate. Uh, sign up for the mailing list. Again, you'll get the free copy of the essay, How the 16th and 17th Amendment Destroyed the Republics, Destroy the Republic. Uh, and there's more information up there. I, I, I enjoy this engagement. I've been enjoying watching the number of downloads. We are some picking up some momentum, and I'm glad to see that. Most of all, though, I'm, I'm glad when, when people are, are looking at what's going on and, and, and asking questions. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you will continue to come back to the website, come back to the podcast. Most of all, I hope to see you again next time at the Constitution Study. Thank you.